Hi, I'm Ksaba and welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript investigates the apparent lack of funding in Northampton Public Schools, gets caught off guard by some improv, explores the possibility of lowering the municipal voting age, and Hamped Up starts the winter sports season with a slam dunk. Welcome to Tell It Like It Is. Theater has no money. The athletic budget was cut, and what is even happening to the Poetry Slam? I'm Nell Sanders, and I'm going undercover to talk about theater and funding. I talked to Isaac Bain about his theater experience in this issue. Um, so last year, the musical lost a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, as, as a business might, uh, when a department loses a lot of money, they get a spending cut. Uh, mm -hmm. and they they don't get to spend as much money uh, and therefore they don't lose as much. Mm -hmm. um, this is pretty frustrating to a lot of people uh, because a lot of people were not involved with the musical. Mm -hmm. um, After I talked to Isaac, I wanted to know more. So I walked into the depths of the black box to talk to some more theater students. Are you guys in theater? Yeah. 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 Do you guys have money? No. 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 They don't have money. Um, Mr. Lombardi has actually like talked to Steve a lot, or so Steve has said, and like has been like brought up the idea of Arts Night In. Um, uh, but other than that, we are Lone Rangers. Yeah. Yeah. What I heard from NHS students really bothered me. So I roamed the halls, pondering what to do, and then decided to go to the source himself, Brian Lombardi. Where's the money, Brian? Um... The more I talk to him, the more I realize that this lack of funding is more complicated than it seems. I, I, the, the activities in the clubs are such a vital part of North Carolina yeah, High School. They really are. Um, and I think we've always prided ourselves in being able to say, if we don't have it, we'll create it. Yeah. And so when I've made decisions on budget, you know, Money is not coming from there. So if it wasn't admin cutting arts funds, then who is? I got in touch with drama teacher Steve Eldridge to give me a clear picture of this issue. And the city's got a lot less money. So money that used to um, come out of the city budget that went into things like the musical mm -hmm. um, basically isn't there anymore. And so we basically have to fundraise for all of the stipends. How is the administration supporting you? Um, Brian Lombardi is incredibly supportive. In fact, he's been really active um, in terms of trying to help us get going with mm -hmm. this thing. Um, he is he is one of the most supportive people for the arts that I know and has been a mainstay of sort of keeping our spirits up. Mr. Lombardi was just too good, so I had to go to the top. I decided to take my investigation downtown to the man himself, John Provost. I'm here now at the Northampton City Hall's municipal offices. So we had built a budget based on an additional 20 students, and we instead received an additional 100 students. Um, and so in order to meet their needs, we've had to um, ask each school in a manner proportional to the si overall size of the budget that they control to contribute to that, um, the need for the new students. So last year we had, had that same kind of budget freeze in effect, but we were able to send the money back to the cost centers. After trekking around town, this is what I finally found. And it's that Northampton Public Schools do a really good job of supporting their students, the arts and extracurricular activities. So this holiday, we should all be very grateful for Mr. Lombardi, Dr. Provost, and all administrative people. Again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Meredith. Caught Off Guard is a fun acting group that displays messages. Some students feel that it is a safe place to go to talk about current issues. So this week I decided to try something new. I went to one of their rehearsals and played some acting games with them. My little coloring book. Your little coloring book. Mm -hmm. And your favorite little stuffy. <gasps> stuffy! <laughs> For me, Caught Off Guard is kind of a safe place where you can go and you can take 
really complicated ideas that don't really have a solution and you can sort of see the entirety of them. You don't, there's no answer that you get from this. It's just seeing different parts of it and seeing it in a way that you feel comfortable in, being able to talk about this with people and knowing you won't be judged about it. Um, my favorite part would probably be the fact that we can go from very deep, very serious conversations into very goofy skits and just sort of having fun, but at the same time, we get to have a bit of both. I feel like it, Caught Off Guard is a really safe place to talk about your feelings and stuff, even though like improv is whatever you want to do. And my favorite thing about Caught Off Guard is where you can go, like people I've met, like new people I've met, and it's just a safe place to be. We're not like an authority you know, on, on the issues. We're, we're people who are also affected by everything we talk about. Um, uh, whether it's just something that some of us deal with, like our skits on like depression and anxiety, um, or if it's like something like it's likely that all of us deal with or have dealt with because we do a lot of stuff for younger for younger students. To me, caught off guard is is like a thing that I come to on Fridays, and yes, we're theater education troupe, um, and we talk about some really deep stuff, um, and we play theater games, and it's fun. But also, one of the main things that we try to show, we're not trying to show the solution to an issue, we're trying to show people how complicated the issue is. Hey guys, it's Leva. So this week I took a break from the ongoing series of musical segments and instead did a segment on an effort to lower the municipal election voting age to 16. So this would be a change that would affect a lot of you and it's something that's interesting and just a very fascinating topic to cover, so hope you enjoy. There's been a few other communities in the United States who have considered that 16-year-olds should be qualified to vote. That should be the voting age where people start to vote and become politically engaged in, in municipal elections. Personally, I think they should vote in national elections as well, but we start small. And the idea is that you get a level of engagement and you develop a sense of citizenry and participation in the government if you introduce um, elections at an earlier age. In terms of democracy, I think lowering the voting age, at least for these municipal elections, is the right thing to do. Um, and that'll broaden the amount of people who are involved in our local elections. As young people are growing up and becoming adults in the world, it's important for us to realize that we do have a voice and that we are able to be represented. But um, as people are turning 18, they're kind of forced into this voting situation, I guess, where they can be very undereducated in who they're voting for, why it's important to vote, and the power of your vote. Some of the pushback has always come from the fact that people think that they're not, 16 year olds aren't sophisticated enough or educated enough or vested enough in the government, which the irony is that those were the very same arguments that were used to deny women the vote, that they didn't know much, they didn't, they weren't involved in politics, they weren't they couldn't discern, they didn't have the capacity to understand and make critical decisions like voting for somebody. The voting age now is just at 18, and that's just an arbitrary age that was lowered from 21 in the Vietnam War because you could be drafted at 18, but you couldn't vote until you're 21. So they decided it was only fair to lower the voting age to 18, and as of now, there's really no scientific proof or evidence that uh, 18 is any better voting age than 16 or 17. If you were to make the argument about um, maturity in terms of like mental maturity and your brain not being fully developed, then who would move the voting age to 25? So that argument, in my opinion, is pretty weak. Point of fact, actually, 16-year-olds are quite 
sophisticated and have the capacity to understand and make decisions that would impact them. 16 years old, you're of the age of consent. You, uh, you can be prosecuted as an adult if you commit a crime. Um, you should therefore, if you're considered liable for those decisions, you should be honored for the ability to make the decision to vote for the people who hold sway in power and have inf impacts and effects on your lives. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Last Friday, the Northampton boys basketball team opened their season at the Curry Hicks Cage over at UMass with a game against their rivals, Amherst. I sat down with Will O'Connor and Elijah Davis to talk about the upcoming season. All right, welcome guys. First week of winter sports. And the first question, I think that's on everyone's mind, is what happened to your nose? All right, so last week we had our first scrimmage. About two trips in, I went into the lane to get the ball and went face to chin with a kid on the other team. I looked down and then I realized my hands were filled with blood and I ran off the court, looked in the mirror and I was like, I've got to go to the hospital now. So your first game you played Amherst and you kept it close right up until the end of the fourth quarter and then that kid who can dunk and block and he kind of took over. But then next game you come back and you win in double overtime. So what adjustments did you make between the first and second game? Harp just stressed after the Amherst game that we need to finish. Like we hung with them the whole three quarters, three and a half, and then towards the end we kind of fell apart. So after that game and the next day in practice, he stressed, he stressed that we just got to finish. And I think against Aguam, double OT, we, we did that. So that was the first game. You guys obviously did very well right up until the end. So do you think by the end of the season that's a team you'll be able to compete with? Yeah, we had a bunch of young kids on the team. They, that was definitely their first time playing in the varsity atmosphere. They were nervous. Everyone was nervous. By the end of the season, we'll have that connection. So last season, I think the football team and the basketball team tied for a number of wins. And this year, the football team obviously upped the ante. You got to the playoffs. You won eight games. So is the basketball team going to exceed that this year, do you think? Yeah, definitely. I think our goal right now is to get to 10 so we uh, make the playoffs and then go from there. But yeah, I think we'll definitely exceed that. Yeah, we try to forget about last year. <laughs> yeah. So, and then my final question is, so the football games, obviously there's a big student section for both basketball and football, but I think for basketball it's a little more loud and intense because you're in a much smaller environment. So do you think that motivates you more than the student section at the football games because it's so much louder? I think just it's closer, um, so people are more interested, I guess. Um, but yeah, it definitely motivates me at least more than football. Yeah, basketball is a lot more up close and personal. And during the football games, I personally don't hear the fan section much. I tend to like tone it out. All right, great. Well, thank you guys so much for being here and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Connor. We love basketball! In other sports news, the girls basketball team won their home opener against Pittsfield on Wednesday, 54 to 51. They are 2-0 to start the season. The swim team is also 2-0. The boys and girls track teams are off to a fast start. The boys are 3-0 and the girls are 2-1. Finally, the East Hampton ice hockey team, which features a number of players from Northampton High School, is off to an 0-2 start after dropping a couple of close games. Check out nhstechnology.org for more and thanks for watching.